people are stuck with inside mental fartery. Sadhguru yeah. calls it mental constipation. And I shortcut all of that brain fartery and just go to action. I did action. That's what I do in all my coaching. I'm basically the future best version of you coming back and telling you what you need to hear. I might pray. I might swear. I might, I don't know, do something that I would never do. Give advice I would never take. Is this fear of disappointment not only something that, that helps you step up the day of, but actually might be holding you back? Yes. You know today's guest from his wildly successful YouTube channels, his books, from the fact that he gets to hang out with really cool people like Grant Cardone and Brendan Burchard and my let Tom Bill you, and of course, a whole lot more. But what you don't know is where he started, where he came from. The first time I met our guest, it was June of 2007. He was hosting a local entrepreneur meetup. We were both a lot younger. We both had hair at the time. <laughs> And we didn't know that almost 15 years later, we would be friends and having the type of conversation for you all that follows. You have to hear this story. So please help me welcome to the We Do Hard Things podcast, my good friend, Mr. Evan Carmichael. Here we go. We do hard things. Round two. Round two. I'm, I have my Minnie Mouse mug. Nina decided to give me a decaf coffee and a Minnie Mouse mug. And she was smiling as she came in. Like, I don't care. I'll drink from it. It's love. Can, can you see what this says? That <laughs> from, from 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 Disney. So my uh, my kids got that for me, and and my son Silas is very proud that he picked that out for me. I have no problem drinking from a Minnie Mouse cup. Let's Why go. would you? Why would you? Right? Brings out my you, eyes. Brings are you ready to go? Yep. If you for I we already went, I thought we were doing it. So round two, Mr. Evan Carmichael is the very first guest wow. on, the, on the, I was going to say something to prove podcast, on the We Do Hard Things podcast. I was the first guest on that one too. You were, you weren't the guest though. We, it's something we do together, but you're the very first person I've been able to be able to, to wrangle into coming back a second time to dig a little bit deeper, to, to go a little bit harder. All Thanks, right. man. Harder. We're even going harder. The first time was pretty hard. We do I, even harder things. I know we do even harder things. Uh, I, you know, for anyone who, who doesn't know Evan, of course, just go Google him. And if you haven't seen the previous conversation, I mean, it was it was really, really good. We, I, I won't I won't ramble on about that. But here's what I actually wanted to start with you about. I wanted to talk about regret. Okay. So the, the reason why is I know that you live in the present very, very well. You don't really think about the past. You don't really get sentimental. But for so many of us who want to do hard things, who want to face hard things, who are scared, we use this idea of like, on my deathbed, what will I regret? Or in 10 years, what will I regret? I know you use this, but I also know you never look back. So you'll, you'll, you'll hit 60 and you won't be looking backwards and you won't regret anything, will you? I used to I used to live life through that lens. I, I use that as a really powerful force earlier in my life to say this moment, this podcast with Mark is going to be the defining moment of my career. And if I don't do it because I'm afraid, I'm going to regret it my whole life. Whether I actually look back or not... <laughs> didn't didn't even matter but that that used to be the framework for what would give me the courage to go do the things mm -hmm. because the the immediate fear is big and the regret you don't feel because it's this little little bit these little ounces every day but those ounces every single day become giant right and so uh, that used to really help me um I haven't used that framework in years. Did you just um, outgrow it, you think? Or are you just like... No, I shortcut it. I mean, if I think back to when I was 19 with my company and I quit, the whole Jeff Bezos regret minimization framework, that's what he called it, which was Jeff basically... Jeff Bezos regret min. I never even heard that that's where that came from. Oh, Jeff Bezos has... That's why he quit his job. He was, he was the youngest VP ever at his Wall Street finance company. And he left to go sell books on the internet. Everybody thought it was crazy. And he 
has his regret minimization framework. It's what he calls it to basically minimize how many regrets, regrets you have. So he's like, I have to do this. Even if it doesn't work out, I have to do it. I have to know. Yeah. So that was my inspiration. Yeah. Uh, that concept. You, you, so you go, you go to 19 with this, you know, you, the, the company that you founded, um, so, so we can walk through that story for anyone who hasn't really heard it before, but it's interesting that you go there. Is that one of the toughest times of your life? Well, that was the first time that I, actually, that's not true. Just before the decision to even be in the company versus having a job was the first time I used it to, to make the, you know, six figures and Okay. So, you, so you're, so you're 19, you're 18, 19 years old. You're, you're going to university. You think that you want to become um, an economic person or something, right? An economic person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know what you want to become when you grow up. I wanted to be a race car driver, but you know, that's not the actual term that people use. So you wanted to be an economic dude, you know, high flying, working at Goldman Sachs or working in the big consultancies or something, right? You wanted to do something big and corporate. You're in university and you find this opportunity to do this biotech startup or something, right? Yeah. So I, I just decided, you know, 300 bucks a month versus hundred K and travel around the world. I'm going to, I'm going to try this thing, even if it fails. Cause I have to know, cause I don't want to live with you hear that? a little bit. Oh, it's okay. the best. We do oh, hard it's things. It's the best. Go. We do. Uh, so I, I, I use that, but back to circling back to how did I get rid of it? I, uh, I just shortcut it. The answer through regret is immediate action. The thing that replaced it was idea to action. Hmm. I don't regret because I'm always moving. I'm doing. You get the idea, you do something about it. Where most of us, including you know former me, you get an idea, you sit on it, you think it, you judge it, you wonder, you worry, you ponder. And then I would use regret as the tool to say, stop thinking and go do it because you don't want to live with regret. And I shortcut all of that brain fartery <laughs> and just go to action. I did action. I mean, the idea for our first podcast was driving through the desert. Mm -hmm. Mark, I wanted to, I got this idea to start a podcast. I'm in first episode when tonight. Great. Let's go. Let's go. We'll do it. I did action. I did action eliminates. I think, I think that's the, a, a better framework. It eliminates the need to use Regret. regret as a tool and yeah. it actually eliminates regret because well, it's, it's interesting. Cause I don't, the, the reason I wanted to start by asking about that is I, 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 I think of regret in the big picture thing. Like if I don't achieve this or don't do this or don't figure this out big picture, then, then I'm going to be really mad at myself. It's not really regret, but in the really short window, it's more like if I can catch myself saying, I can't do that, then I, I've, and I've learned this from you too, this idea of like, if you can't, you must, like, if you say you can't, well, now we have to do it, but it's not so much tied in regret. And I was wondering about whether, whether regret was a better tool to be able to draw on for those really tough things, those really hard things, those times where, where, um, routine or, or, you know, when, when all the other tools kind of fall away, whether regret is really the thing where it's like, okay, I better do this. I think it can be. I think if you're stuck in your head, then yes, it can be. It's the way to get out of your head and into action that whatever this thing that you're afraid to do is going to be the greatest thing of your entire life. And if you don't do it, you're going to regret wondering what if. Yeah. Absolutely. I just want to shortcut the whole thinking process, period. The fact that I came up with the idea means it's genius. And so I have to do it. I mean, that sounds <laughs> old Mark would I hated that, but that, that's, uh, and I love it so much now. <laughs> that's, that's the actual, that's the mental conversation. I don't say those things out loud, but that's what I'm telling myself. This idea came to me, therefore it's genius. Right. And so I must start. And then so there's, start. there's no thinking. You just shortcut all the thinking, the mental, the mental fartery. The mental fartery. I like fartery. that. We're going to, we're going to trademark that. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> I think people, I think people, people are stuck with inside mental fartery. Sadhguru yeah. calls it uh, mental constipation. I think that's it. You're just stuck in like constipation mode. You're constipated. Mm. 
mm. in your head going back and forth. So, so that could be the flush. Like regret could be, what do you take when you're constipated? We're taking this really weird. Yeah. You're taking this a little bit further, you and- take, but you take a pill, right? Or you, you stuff something in you when you have constipation, that's regret. You can use that as a pill to flush your system so that you can go and do the thing. But what I really want to do is not get constipated. And that's right. idea of action. So I don't need the pill. Ah, so it's like regret is the symptom and, and you can use it sometimes to know like, okay, I'm seeing this in my life. I'm seeing this symptom, which means, but you want to just go ahead and like cure heart disease rather than, rather than have to use tools to work through the symptoms and everything. Oh, I wouldn't call regret the symptom. Regret is the, is the pill. It's the medication. Yeah. It's the medication to solve, to get you through whatever you're going through. Like mm. Overthinking, overanalyzing, overpreparing, over, 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 over judging, worrying, whatever, all that stuff that's keeping yeah. you stuck. Great. Here's your pill to take, but I'd rather not have to take the pill. And I, I know that you're not a, a big uh, person for remembering a lot of things of the past, but you remember how you feel, not necessarily what actually happened. At, at what point was this a real turning point for you? Um, you know, where you went from, you talk about after every mountain is another mountain, right? The idea that you're beyond just the leveling mountains, up. More mountains. Yeah, beyond the, the mountains, mountains, more mountains. And so when you think back to, to those, those, those light bulb, those turning moments where it's like, oh, I see now. Oh, I realize now. Oh, I, I've broken through this. Oh, I've changed this. Do you even note these changes? Or are, is it only later when someone like me comes along and says, hey, what about this thing that you used to talk about? And you're like, oh, I don't really do that anymore. I think it's a mix. Um, there's no one answer for that. I think I'm talking to myself a lot and I come up with ideas and I just, so for example, yesterday I was thinking about risk. You're thinking about risk? Why? I was thinking about risk. I was thinking the game, the game. No, not risk? the game. No, no, no. The concept oh. of risk. And, and I was trying to figure out where I'll do some things that are very, perceived risky that I don't feel are risky and other things that I'm super safe on that maybe too safe on. Hmm. And I was trying to, I was trying to put into a framework or try to explain or understand it myself just so that it could be a tool for others. Um, and I haven't even landed on where, you know, it's a, it's a messy model right now. I don't know. I don't know. I'm figuring it out, but that's, I wake up and I think about these things. <laughs> I'm and just so do ta you, do I'm you... talking to myself all the time. And so how do you work through a process like that where you, where you identify, hmm, let me think about risk. And then, and then how do you piece all those things together? Um, I don't stress out about it. Like I'm thinking about it. So then I, I continue the conversation with myself and then I don't settle on anything. Like in this case, I still haven't settled on it, but something else will hit me in a week or I, maybe this becomes a breakthrough where I talk it out and now boom, I've got the answer. Uh, so you're just, so I think, I think, so, so this the is the thing, like you're, 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 you talk about people getting in their head, you know, we're, we're two in our heads where we need to use the, but you're talking about rolling around these things in your mind right now and building a fence and getting a handle on it. So you're, you're thinking things through as well. What's the difference between the person who's thinking things through? <laughs> what a softball question. What's the difference between the person who thinks things through and never does anything and you who thinks things through and then takes action? Well, cause there's no action tied to the risk thing. I'm talking to myself constantly. I don't, I don't see that as like judging or playing small. Hmm. I'm talking to myself. Uh, dude, I talked, this is weird. I talk to myself all the time in the back of my head. I'm, I'm thinking right now, I'm so pumped that I'm on this show with Mark. Like I'm doing a good, let's, let's give him a good show. Let's, let's show up and answer all his questions. Like that's literally the conversation. There's an Evan right here talking to Evan See, right it's, now. It's funny because the, the Mark that's talking to Mark right now is going, am I asking Evan hard enough questions? And I know him so well. And, and how can we make this new and all of those things? <laughs> okay. But that, that's a conversation that I'm having with myself without it being, it's not like, I, I wish I did X. You know, right. I wish I learned how to parachute or something. Oh, but I'm not, I'm not brave enough. Or, I mean, that's, that's where people get stuck. There's no action tied to the risk thing yet. Maybe that leads to some kind of action. Maybe that, mm. maybe the conversation of like, let's give a sh good show for Mark leads to me doing something, but there's nothing that there's no action item that I'm sitting on 
Like as soon as you get the idea, then you move it to action. You get an action idea, you got to go do the thing. I think the most of that maybe that may be helpful for people. I think people see these as big moments mm. and they're not, that's not how they start. I was, I was before this talking to a guy who has a podcast. He's an NFL wide receiver right now. Like he's playing in the NFL wide receiver. And he was asking about like these big, big breakthrough moments. And I talked about Mark Drager because I talked about the, the top 10 rules of success and why Kanye West is on my wall. And I told the story a bunch, but it seemed very relevant at the time to his question. And when I decided to throw away my day to work on the Kanye West video, it was not with some big intent or ambition to like, this is the future. This is everything I'm going to do. This will be what I, what I get known for. It was really just to show Mark. <laughs> in his face. Kanye West. Yeah. Like push Kanye West in Mark's face to go learn from him. That was it. It was really just, it was in my head, an actual unproductive thing to do. I just care too much about it. It was not productive. I, I threw away things that I was supposed to be working on that had tangible value to my day. I'm not just sitting around every day like, oh, I wonder what I'm going to do. No, I had a full day that I pushed to work on this video just for Mark. And I put it on the channel so, so I thought people might learn from it. But it, it ended up being a big thing without yes. me knowing it was going to be a big thing. Yeah. And but, plenty of times but, the things that I tried don't work out either. But here's, here's the thing. So here... Here's what I, I marvel about you, having known you for as long as I have, and at the same time, ha am starting to grow more confident and comfortable doing for myself just by being around you, but still struggle with, which is when you throw your day away to do the thing that comes into your mind because you know that there's something there and you're excited, it feeds your soul but it maybe messes up everyone else. When you, when, when you challenge me and say, Mark, rebuild your schedule so you can get more efficient in this and that, it puts me first, but maybe it doesn't put other people first because they have to sacrifice. And so it's not just about selfishness because I don't think it's selfishness because I do believe that if you can bring a better version of yourself to, the, to what you're doing, everybody wins. But, but I, I haven't learned yet how to fully embrace, like when you, when you decide that something is important, you're perfectly comfortable canceling everything that you need to cancel to do the thing that you need to do and let the balls drop and let the mistakes happen and let things happen. You're just, you're very comfortable with that. I think that most of us can take steps towards getting a little bit better at it, but we still bump up against other people's um, expectations of us. And if, if, I, if I move my schedule, who does that hurt? And if I cancel my day's meetings because this is the most exciting thing in my life right now, what are they going to say? And, and what if it doesn't go anywhere? And who does that hurt? Like, There's a lot of collateral damage, it feels like, when you put yourself or your projects or the things you need to do before other people. Well, my number one fear is disappointing people. So how do you balance that? Well, it's one knowing that uh, I've given a ton to the relationship. Like, who am I canceling on? What am I pushing aside? I'm giving a ton to the relationship, hopefully, right? I mean, I feel really bad if if it was some giant meeting that I've never met the person before and it was an introduction from somebody huge and I'm, you know, postponing. Um, but for the most part, anybody that I'm working with, I've already poured a ton of love and energy. So it's, it's the pre-work mm. that gets there. Then it's the explanation. So if it, if it involves somebody else, it's like, here's why I'm doing this. Sorry, I can't record videos today because I have to do this thing for, for Mark and all the people like Mark. It's the explanation. Uh, often I'll bring them in. Like a lot of these things, I, again, don't go anywhere. Uh, I referenced the uh, Kanye West because that one worked out. But then I did the Shania Twain dance challenge, which is the polar opposite. Yeah, remember, where, remember where, the Believograms that we that I helped you name the Believograms. I've, I have so many projects that just went nowhere, <laughs> and just I'm just not attached to the the Shania Twain dance challenge. Was I was I had a song. Just quickly for the audience, I was playing Shania Twain in the office, and I think it was Alex. It was like, didn't know what the song was. Like, you don't know this song? 
So I got so upset that I went to Instagram and said, Alex doesn't know this song. It's crazy, right? And I played it. And then most of my audience writing back said, we don't know this song either. Like, you guys don't know this song, No One Needs to Know Right Now by Shania Twain. Are you kidding me? It became my mission that day to then make a dance challenge video to Shania Twain. So can, can I, can I tell you real quick? Okay. So, so I know that I was there when we, when, when I helped you make your first YouTube video, super proud to have been there for that. I know that I pissed, pissed you off enough to uh, help you get started the top 10 rules to success, which is amazing. Uh, that Shania Twain, the Shania Twain challenge was mm-hmm. the first time I ever posted a story to Instagram. There you go. It's the, it's the video of me just like in my truck, yeah, I'm like the truck. singing along and I'm like all heavy still and I'm singing along and I post it and then you go, you didn't tag me. And I'm like, what? I'm like, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. So then I have to delete it and I, you have to, you, you stopped your day to teach me how to put it on Instagram. <laughs> Dude, that was my whole day. I had to teach people. So the, the, the challenge was take a 15 second clip from the song, yeah. play the song and, and you dance to it somehow. Yeah. And Mark basically just nodded his head or something, but whatever. No, no, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. It was September. It was probably the worst September 2018, dance. September, 2018. I have the video. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I started DMing. You could see who was online. I started DMing people. Hey, Johnny 20 dance challenge. I need, I need you to do this. And some people that I haven't been in touch with for, you know, a year or two. And some of the comments were like, I did this. I don't even know what this is for, but I'm doing this because Evan Carmichael told me to. <laughs> Right. And, and some of them were just fun. Some of them end up being crazy emotional. It's like, I've been having the hardest year of my life. And yeah. this is the most fun thing I've done. <laughs> and I was so outside my comfort zone to make this quick dance video that I, I can't believe how much I've grown. And like all of this crazy stuff from people. Alex yeah. later went to the hospital. Uh, I think his mom was in the hospital, something mm-hmm. routine, not like mm-hmm. nothing crazy. He's like, oh, I can't do it. I'm in the hospital. Alex, I need the 15 second. You're, you're a dance instructor. All these people are posting these videos and are nervous. You need to post a video. Yeah, he couldn't find anyone who was willing. So he's asking the doctors. Do he's asking the nurse because he wanted to do it salsa style. So he wanted to ask somebody to dance with him. And he finally found somebody outside. <laughs> Will you dance salsa with me to a Shania Twain country song? And it's basically the pitch. And he finally found somebody outside the hospital who would do it. And we filmed it. And we put that all together. And in the the... the the um, feedback was a range of, oh, that was really fun. That was cool too. Oh my God, this was life changing for me. And then we turned it in a YouTube video and posted it. And people then wrote back to me and they said, just like the top 10, like after Kanye's top 10 was, okay, do Michael Jordan, do Dame Dash, do Jeff Bezos. <laughs> people wrote to me and said, hey, do, when's the next one? I'm down. This is great. When's and you're like, it's challenge? over. Like, no, not happening. <laughs> No interest. We are done. We are not doing another dance challenge. But it's still willingness to throw the day away to focus on this thing. And I think this ties back into the whole risk conversation. When I get attached to something, I just don't see the risk anymore. Hmm. This has to happen. Hmm. There's, no, <laughs> there's, no, there's no exception. This is happening. To tell Alex while he's visiting his mom in a hospital, Go find someone to dance with. You're a dance teacher. We need you on here. Yeah. And so, but yeah. It's, nothing. it's interesting to me to because me because you are so. I mean, I know that you're 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 very focused on intentional time. So if I'm going to do something, it has to mean something, and I have to bring my all to it. That's that's the way I I kind of describe how you've scheduled your day. Whatever you're working on, whatever you're focused on, um, and and at the same time, you're very generous with your time, like. Like you will, you will push things. I've, I've seen you be on a call with me or help me out when you've literally pushed other things off. And we've already talked about that. When you get focused on something, you're willing to push things out if it doesn't hurt other people. So at one point you're very efficient. And at the other point you are very um, free and generous with, with money, like from the business point of view and stuff, I've seen you, I've been sitting beside you where I've said, just buy that app, that, buy the Android app. And you're like, it's two bucks. I'm not buying that app. And at the same time, I've been with you in other situations where it's clear to me 
you don't really pay that much attention to money sometimes. And so, so there's like this, this, the, the reason you're so hard to figure out, man, as, as a friend and as a guy that I know is that there's this crazy duality to you almost all the time, extreme focus, and then super generous, extreme cheap, like the, the cheapest dude in the world. And then the other time it's just like, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Sure. Okay. How do you balance that? How do you, how do you make sense of that yourself? Or is it just, this is well, that that's the, that, I mean, that's the conversation on risk, like risk appetite for money. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I will I might judge a two dollar app, but then <laughs> yeah, but then I've seen you make really big investments in other things. Yeah, and and flying business class or whatever it is. Um, I don't so I, I don't judge myself for it. I think that's a starting point. I, and I'm, I'm, like, I'm not I'm not judging you. I'm no, trying no, I know, to figure I know. out. I, but, how to but make- just as a tool, like I don't know how to teach it yet, which is part part of the risk conversation with myself. I don't, I'm not, I'm not doing that introspection to try to not be happy with myself. It's more, is there anything that I can teach here? Cause some of the things that I do are super weird and impossible to teach or just really hard to teach. And some things are like very accessible and easy like to what? connect to. Huh? Like what? Um, I think super we- when you say I sometimes, some things I do are super weird. Like, hmm, like what? <laughs> I don't know. Um, what do I do? That's, that it's hard to connect to. Um, I don't know. You've got to have some and nothing's coming to mind. I'm a weird duck with some things. I mean, are you still doing, are you still doing your squats every time you go to the bathroom? Yeah. A squats or pushups, but that's not, that's not so bad. Um, uh, why even that idea of like being able to throw away the day and do a Shania Twain dance challenge or make a video or something. It's easy with to say when it works out, but Shania Twain dance challenge didn't work out, but that video did not pop off and we haven't done one since. Right. That's a waste of time. I don't see it as a waste of time. That's a hard conversation to have or the, um, I don't know what else I do. That's super weird. So you can't, you can you see, it's funny. You say that you do, you know, I'm a strange duck. I do these weird things and you kind of, you kind of do that. It's but. all normal for me, but like the whole, so, so today movie makers, we're doing, um, we're doing coaching this is one of my favorite topics. So how do I be a better coach? Like, Oh my gosh, let's go. What a topic. I actually split it up into two. We're doing it this, we did it today and in two weeks for the next session, I broke it up and even broken up. It's a ton of content to get through. And when I get to something like wear their skin, the concept of not just being in their shoes, but being them. When I say, Things like, so like they'd say, well, give me an example of how you do it. Did you show the Matthew McConaughey clip? No. Um, I I shared an example about Lily, where I was was working with Lily, Mm -hmm. who's an entrepreneur that I invested into, and she was frustrated that something happened in the situation, and she started swearing. And so I swore back at her. And she's like, I've never heard you swear. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't. (laughs) You did. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like, yeah, that's you. I've, I've, I'm I've you. Been, I'm I've being been, you. I've been with you where you, you've you've sent me a prayer, and I said yeah. I didn't know you were so good at praying. Yeah, and you said I'm not praying. I'm not. I'm just being you. That's it. I'm just wearing their skin. I'm actually <laughs> being you. I am you, and and I've evolved that to actually be. I'm not just you. You start off being them. I'm. I am you, and then I become the 2025 version of you. Yeah. So really, it's like I'm future you talking to present you. That's, that's, that's what I do in all my coaching. I'm basically the future best version of you coming back and telling you what you need to hear. And so I, I might, I might pray. I might swear. I might, I don't know, I, I, I do something that I would never do, give advice I would never take, but it's not me talking anymore. And so that's like, what are you even saying? That doesn't make sense. Um, but again, I'm not judging it. That's just what it is. That's the best way that I can, can communicate it. But that's, that's a hard message to pick up. Where if, if I'm talking about being introverted and doing difficult things and scary, difficult, hard or whatever, those are a lot easier yeah. to, to grasp and pick up. I was thinking about um, your one word. <clears throat> 
uh, the book, your one word and, and, and the philosophy, because I, again, as I was preparing for the, for this talk, it's like, I know, I know you so well, we've had so many conversations. And so I'm like, okay, I have this opportunity to ask Evan stuff that, that normally doesn't come up. And so I know how much effort and time and care and heart and whatnot went into your one word. Um, I know how your one word is still central to everything you do, which is believe. Um, do you think that as the years have gone by that, that you're still bumping up and fighting against this, or is it like regret a tool that you had that you've graduated out of? No, and it's always, it's forever. Like if you look at yours as extraordinary, you're never done. I feel never done because I don't feel good enough, but, but I, you'll, you'll what I'm asking you is whether, whether there's a, there's a, there's a next level no. to hit. No, but yes. And then, then there's beyond the mountains, more mountains. <laughs> you don't want it to be done. You don't want to feel like, oh, I'm extraordinary now. Right. That's it. I'm done. No, you want growth. You want to keep climbing. You want it. You want to swim forever. So, so believe, I, I, I need more belief. So I use your one word as the first step, the homework, whenever I'm helping someone with a brand strategy. So when I'm ever helping someone help figure out who they need to be to say what they need to say to get what they want, um, we start with your one word. And the other day we were taking a group of entrepreneurs through it. um, And I had had one of the business partners uh, weeping, crying, um, really, really broken up to the point where the other business partners were very uncomfortable. And it's because no one had ever asked him these questions. He hadn't spent a lot of time thinking about it and he never really addressed these types of things before. And so it just reminded me just how powerful you're just having this word, having this focus, having this drive, having this North star, whatever it is you want to call it. I think it's the lens that we use to look at the world and judge what we will do and won't do and what have you. Um, And that's what got me thinking about belief, whether you feel like you're coming closer, whether you feel like the, the 11 or 12 years that you've been on YouTube and the years before that, when you were running, you know, the, the publication company and the years before that, when you were speaking and like, do you feel like you're at least getting closer to it? No. Further. It's further away than ever. Yeah. Yeah. It's further away than ever. Like the, it's, it's like, it's the, old adage that the more you know, the more you realize how much you don't know, (laughs) which is great. Like, I don't see that as a bad thing. There's so much more room to grow and learn and get better and improve that it's amazing. I'm never going to, I'm never going to do it. And I wake up every day trying to do it. Like that's another one that's hard for people to get that I've got this mission. I don't believe in goals, like five-year goals and 10-year goals. That's a weird thing to say. People don't, that contradicts yeah. a lot of people who are like me. Uh, I don't think it serves you. I, I don't think it helps you. I, I want to have a mission so big that I'm never going to do it. And I wake up every day trying to do it. That, that hurts people's brains. It doesn't make sense. It's, it does because it, and that's why I'm asking about this because if my mission was, if my, so first of all, it's really, I've always struggled to be able to take extraordinary and say, I want to help you be more extraordinary because I really want to be more extraordinary and helping you will help me be more extraordinary. But you just want to give belief away. It's not like, it's not like, I mean, you need to believe to help other people believe, but it's not like you're chasing belief the way that I feel like I'm chasing extraordinary or that my wife is chasing strength and doesn't want to feel weak or any of these things. So you've already, you've already been able to take this thing and be, and, and rather than just make it selfish the way that I feel I do, you, you're able to push it out and make it really selfless. Um, but, but on top of that, it's just, I don't know, from the outside, it just looks like you've got it figured out. You're super generous with it. And it's, and it's no longer this thing that, that is um, holding you back, if you know what I mean. I think the more you, I don't think that fully goes away. I think you just shift it towards service. That reminds me of the Tony Robbins exercise that he does at UPWs where he goes, your six human needs and growth was always in my top, but then I always struggled. He's like, what are your top two? And I struggled between the next two, between significance and contribution because they're mm-hmm. tied. Yep. So not, there's, not tied so there's like, real quick, there's certainty, uncertainty, and then there's connection 
and significance. And then below that, the ones that they really want you to get is what uh, contribution and growth or something. I have the book here, but whatever. doesn't matter. <laughs> significance and contribution are linked. And uh, what I've tried to do over the past number of years is shift away from significance and towards contribution, basically service. Like, is it about you or is it about the people around you? Hmm. And it's, it's, I don't think it goes to zero. I was talking to Ed Milet about this on, on an IG live we did together. And the same thing. It's like, he's not at, he's not at zero significance. You still value significance, but the goal is to make the contribution side more. So hmm. you just might be more skewed towards the significance part of it. You, want extraordinary and you need that in your life for yourself you want to feel like you are extraordinary and it's not altruistic to do everything that you're doing but it's not completely selfish either it's not zero the, the contribution isn't zero maybe it's 20 percent, and the goal is over the years to slowly shift that towards more contribution hmm. Here's another one that you found weird. We fought on this all the time. Tying your identity to the, to the, the effort, effort, not the results. effort over like the that results. That was our first big fight, I think. That was, that with, was the first argument that we did on IG Live that made you think, hmm, I can do a podcast with Mark and yell at him every week. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, tying yourself or to the effort you put in instead of the results that you got. That, that we had multiple discussions, arguments, fights, whatever, over, over, Weeks, months. Can I tell you that last week, no, it was earlier this week. I, no, whatever. I realized that I was really proud of myself for the days I was putting in and for the time I was putting in and for the effort I was putting in as opposed to the results because the results weren't coming. Um, and I had this moment. And, it, and so when you yelled at me about this effort versus results, like, do, you know, is it more important for effort and for results or for effort? That was, that was, that was January of 2019, man. That was, that was a very long time ago. And just last week, I realized that subconsciously I was already starting. I was starting to do this now. Two years later, it took me two years. And, you know, for some people it takes longer, but that's a weird thing. Like, what do I believe that other people don't believe? That's another one of the, their weird ones. Now, now they're flowing, you know, be a tree. Your job is to take in other people's negativity. Yeah, damn the Doritos. Uh, damn Your job Doritos. isn't yeah, isn't dude. to get rid of everything. It's to just smell it. Yeah, right in that's front a of super you. weird one. That doesn't make sense. If I'm on a diet, which I am now, I mean, I'm a super strict diet, trying to lower my cholesterol, uh, going to the store and smelling the bread and and smelling the pizza and you know, the, the, my nieces and nephews were over and they were having this like ramen and whatever. Oh my God. They had these candies, these like raspberry something candy. And I love them. And I brought the bag up and just said, Oh my gosh, I might've jeweled in the bag. It was so good. And then you put it down and give it back to them. It's like, I'm amazing. That's weird. That is hard for people to connect to. If I, if I leave with that, I'm losing people. Like you're just, yeah psycho. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that's a lot easier to connect with me. So that you, you give them, you give them the thing that they can connect with the easiest and then you slowly change their lives. And so if you're not past focused, which you're not, and you're, and you're not that much future focused because you're pretty, a pretty present person, how do you, whether this is the risk conversation or not, how do you plan for what's next? I mean, so belief is this, believe is this thing that you're always fighting for, that you're, that you're never going to hit. It's getting further away from you. How do you plan for what's next and attack it and not just live in total comfort for, for the many gifts and many blessings that you kind of already have? So I'd say like 85% present, 15% future. And in that 15%, I'm, I'm planning. Like, what am I doing next? What, what is my calendar? I'm, I'm obsessing over my calendar constantly. But right? those are the tasks. I'm asking more about the whys and stuff. The, the why is constant. The why, the why, the why and the who, like, they don't change. I want to spread belief. I want to solve the world's biggest problem. That's, that's constant. 
the why because I struggled so much as a 19 year old entrepreneur. I want other people not to struggle as much, constant. It's the how, how do I attack it? How do I approach it? What, what new idea should I go all in on or not? Where should I play or not? You know, revising your whole clubhouse strategy is a, is a du jour, like very timely thing versus what I would have said six months ago. For sure. But so, so, so like I, I, so I've heard, I've heard people say, you know, um, and I, I thought it was very, I thought it was really timely and really great. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't turn to an 18 year old for advice, um, you know, on who to marry, on what career or any of those types of things. But we make decisions much earlier in life that we're later living with. So, you know, I pick a career at 18 and then I'm 35 and unhappy. Well, you know, you just never stop and you never reassess where you're at and you never ask those questions and you never take on those challenges and stuff. Um, for your, for your, for you to keep drawing on like, well, as 19, I just didn't have, I don't know. I just don't know how that's still so powerful for you versus it changing. You know, people talk about every six months or every year to, to look at your values and what are your current values and what do you want? Where are you going and all this stuff? It just, it seems so static with you. It seems so firm. I mean, I think it's firm for everybody. That's why I wrote the books, <laughs> but it's every time I see an entrepreneur struggling, that's the reminder. It's not me going back to being 19 again. I see it in every person that I help. I see 19 year old Evan in, in every movement makers and every podcast and everything that I'm doing. I'm seeing a version of 19 year old Evan. I don't, I don't need to, in every comment, like I don't need to go back and remember the pain that I was struggling with. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think if you have to go back and think about it, you're doing it wrong. Um, another thought that came though, as you were saying that is how do you plan when you're present minded? When my present feels off, I need a new plan. Mm. So why I go back to my calendar and because that's where I'm spending my time. My energy is a reflection of my actions in the calendar. When I feel, if I go through the day and I feel like I didn't, Oh, I didn't feel good today. What happened? Was it trigger? Was it me? Was it somebody else I talked to? Was it my, my lunch? You know, like, what was it? I'm, I'm always talking to myself. So I'm always paying attention because I'm present minded. And if, if too many days go by, I can find the pattern. I'm not smart but I have pretty good pattern recognition. So you can find you the pattern. You mean you're not smart. Are you, come on, you're just being humble. No, no. I mean, I, I don't think I would crush an SAT. Uh, I mean, not an SAT. I don't even know what the stupid thing is. What's the test? The IQ uh, test. An IQ <laughs> test? Or the, yeah, like the, I don't think I would SATs. crush an IQ test. <laughs> Whatever. You see, I'm not that smart. I don't know. I don't know a lot of things. Um, but I've, I have really good pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. And when you're present minded and pattern recognition, you can, you can find the patterns. And so whenever I find a pattern that feels off, then I have to make that's okay. Got a plan. Now we're moving to the future. Like I, I don't want this anymore. I don't want, I don't want to talk to that person anymore. I don't want to do this on Wednesdays anymore. I don't want to, whatever, whatever the thing is, I'm done with that. And now we're going to make a new change. So that how you feel in the present, especially consistently one off, I'm not so worried about it. It's a pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. If it's coming up over and over again, something has to change. My who and the why are constant, but the how will change based off of the energy that I'm bringing. It, it all ties together. If you think about it, like, am I proud of my effort that I'm putting in? Well, the energy was off today. I'm not proud of my effort. Why? What happened? Well, this thing happened. Hmm. Maybe I don't want to do that anymore. Okay. Let's, that's it. I'm done here. And I, I another weird thing, I will cut stuff off and just not look back. And we're now we're doing this, guys. Yeah, that that I've seen. It's that over. I've been a, that I've been a part of. It's, this is the it's risk. Like dead. my heart is not into it anymore. I'm done, and I'm just moving on to the next thing, and and try to minimize the casualties, or whatever along the way. Um, and I, I don't think I've super like pissed anybody off, but but staying in the relationship, or the project, or the or the company, or whatever. Once I've checked out. Oh, that's it. I'm, I, I'm out. Cause that's where most people lose. You're like, you're still stuck in that same business, yeah. or same relationship five years later and you yeah. knew it wasn't right and you didn't move on. 
Well, I mean, here's here's a more recent example. You, you mentioned Clubhouse strategy earlier. We're obviously making changes with Clubhouse and things like that. But, uh, you know, we do the Something to Prove podcast together. It's for two years now. It's gone to certain places like YouTube. We're moving it to Clubhouse. And I said, do we, should we put something on YouTube and we're not? And you said, you said no. Like, no, we're focused on Clubhouse now. No, there's no, there's, let, let's just go. Let's just move on to the next thing. And so. Um, wait, wait, finish the story, the follow-up, the next part. What was your next question after that? What do you mean by was my next question? Oh, it was, should we put, it was, should we put a notification? Wasn't it? Should we have some kind of announcement or something yeah. to say that we're moving on and go find us here? Like, yeah, no, no. move on. Yeah, I know. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. Let's go. I already forgot about it. What's the name of the show? Great. <laughs> <laughs> next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's this. Um, yeah. And, and, the, and the reason why I, I love it, the reason why I marvel at it is, is it, it's so many of the qualities. It's, it's, it's being focused. It's knowing that if you put energy into something, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move forward. It's knowing that you only have so much energy and you can't spread yourself so thin that, that you're willing to just focus on this thing right now to drive it forward and do everything that you can. Um, and as you were saying, me... And so many people who are listening just are stuck. We're stuck in the decisions we made a long time ago. We're stuck being in relationships or being polite because we don't want to step on any toes or we don't want to upset anyone or we feel we owe it to them or this or that. And the fact that you have figured this out maybe 10 or 15 or even longer ago, I don't know when you start, when, when were these moments where you really started to put pieces in place, but who you are today is someone who's, who's loving and gracious and you pour yourself into people but at the same time, you're willing to just be very black and white and like, and like say, no, we're doing this and, and, and say it with confidence and change your mind and not beat yourself up or judge yourself or anything else. Yeah. So being back to the top, regret can be a good tool. Like fear of future regret can be a great tool to help you get through it. But ultimately, I need action, maybe, <laughs> you know, let's go. Yeah. You know, even speaking on that point, by the way, I'm recruiting you in a project. Um, okay. Yeah. So there's a guy who I was, who I was coaching, who, um, he's, he's, uh, in case you might watch this, I don't want to share too much yet. Cause he doesn't even know this is happening, but, um, solid dude. And I want to help him get to the next step. And part of that is we're going to, we're going to do a full rebrand for him. I like it. Redo his website. Yes. And hire a photographer in his local market to take pictures of him. Mark's going to do a session with him and break down his brand strategy and, and write a homepage copy for him. And, and, and we're going to launch this guy. I like it. And it's not the, it's not the use of, it's not the best use of my time at all. And now I'm, I'm, I'm last night thinking about who do I know in his city that might have a connection to like be able to take pictures or a photographer instead of just going to Google and like his city. And I found somebody and his camera guy is going to help out. Um, you know, I'm Mark doesn't even know until now that he's doing it, but he's going to do I, it. I have an inkling. I have an inkling of, of what might be happening, but no, I don't know what's happening. I didn't know this at all. And I like the fact that you're going to throw all of your time and all of your attention and all of your network to be able to make this happen for the person. And it will be the most important thing. And then you'll jump onto the next thing. It's like, it's like yeah. you're addicted to like, but I'm recruiting people in, like I'm recruiting you in. I said, Mark, I need you to do this. I need you to find time in your calendar to talk to him and then turn it into a landing page copy. And that's not a giant thing, but that's, that's stepping on other people's schedules and times. Um, the guy who I talked to in his local market is not somebody I know super well. It's like, hey, here's what I want to do. But it's bringing him into the mission. It's like, here's what I want him to do. This guy's down on his luck. You know, a little more story. So he's pumped to be a part of it. Like people want to be a part of stuff. I yes. feel like it matters. Yes. Most, he, most people yes. are not living a life where they're, where they're doing this. So when you are off doing it, you're doing your chunk to hunk, hunk to chunk, hunky chunk, hunk, chunk, hunk, chunk, chunk to hunk, hunk challenge. Right. Chunk to hunk challenge. Yeah. And, and part of that is, recruiting you have a guy helping you right mm -hmm. like you've got mm -hmm. is it mike who's your guy joshua josh no not joshua the the guy who's helping you who's your trainer oh neil neil o'neill or neil 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 yeah neil's like 
jazz to be part of i mean i don't even know neil but neil's jazz to be part of this oh yeah yeah and i had to it's 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 interesting because that you bring this up only because i only just learned this lesson very recently that if you make if that if you put yourself out there with courage and leadership which is maybe what all leaders are supposed to do and you share your intentions and you get people who are excited to help you they want to help you they want to help you and i don't know why at this point in my life i'm just learning this lesson but but i feel like i i feel like yeah, I feel like a lot of us are afraid to share our idea or put it out there for fear of judgment, which means we don't, which means we keep it kind of vague, which means no one gets excited about it. And then that just teaches us that no one's excited about what we're excited about. But it's because we're not sharing what we're excited about. We're not putting it out there. We don't believe in it, if you know what I mean. People people gravitate to people who are excited. And so you're you're bringing them in with your excitement. So when I get excited about something... I have no, like if you said, no, I'm not going to write the copy for this guy. Depends. I might have a couple of reactions depending <laughs> just because it's you. But like, Mark, Drager, just freaking do the copy. You know, that might be the response. But, um, or it might be, okay, whatever. I'll find somebody else. Like just, I know I can find somebody else who could do it too. Or it could be, dude, this is, this is going to be, you can look back and know that this is like you changed somebody's life today. What else are you writing? It's the, it's the whole Steve Jobs sugar water to the, when he recruited the CEO of Pepsi, what are you going to do? Sell sugar water the rest of your life? Or do you want to go change the world? Like people want to feel like they're included in something. Yes. And so if anything, I don't do it on a big enough scale. Like I do it on these little micro projects. I do it on, let's go help this guy. Let's go help him. Let's, let's get Mark to do Mark in the car videos. And I'll sit on Instagram all day long on Easter holiday, responding to people, telling them to go look at his videos. Like I do it, if anything, too micro as opposed to something bigger. Yeah. So is that, is that what risk looks like for you then to continue to challenge yourself to, I mean, because because you speak on big stages, but each stage that gets bigger and bigger, you know, you have that heartbeat. You show up. You do what you need to do um, for yourself. Is it is it not? Is it taking these little micro challenges and just trying to make them bigger, or is it thinking bigger? Because you you didn't really want to do the twenty three city tour and have it be paid. Um, you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of things that made you uncomfortable, but you get challenged. You step up and do it. So so what does that look like for you then? I don't know if I knew what it was and I would do it. It's the, it's the, it's the billion dollar question, right? Like you, you got a billion dollars. What would you do with it? Oh, invest it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't think money is a problem. I, I, I've got more money than I, than I know, not like know what to do with whatever, but like money is not the problem to, to throw at things. I, I, I don't know what it what do I want to do? I already think I'm doing like, I'm doing the best that I can that I know of what to do right now. You know, is it reforming the education system? I'm doing it. Like, I think I'm doing, it. I think YouTube is the best way to do it. People are watching my videos and listening to what I'm putting out more than their teachers. Like we're already doing it. What do you think is happening in the world right now? So I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't think money's the problem. Do I then go give grants to a bunch of entrepreneurs? I don't think money is the problem. Right. I don't think money, it's not how I would solve it. I don't think small business loans and grants is the problem. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what the solution is. Like if I had, there's no big goal. I have the big goal, but there's no like, this is the action. This is, these are the steps of how to make it happen. So maybe like this is the to- problem with not having five-year goals or thinking five-year goals are stupid. Is that, is that you have your eyes set on, on forever that can't be achieved. And then you have your calendar with lots and lots and lots of like really good and, and like really good work, really spontaneous things. But maybe, maybe that two year or three year, four year, five year goal is the thing that most people leverage to know what they're working towards or pushing for. If I had a 10 year goal, I'd be doing it right now. Like, maybe your goal about, is like, to take on more risk. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, if that, if, if that felt right, if like, if, if I get to the end of my risk conversation with myself and that's the answer, then I'll go do something about it. Right. I forget which VC it was, but it was a famous VC. It was like, basically take your, take your five-year goals and make it happen in the next five weeks. And that's his challenge to all the entrepreneurs, like I, whatever that time frame is with 10 year, I'm making in, in a year or something like that. But I have no problem with that. 
But is that, is that practically even possible? So like, yeah. I know in the next year that I have some major goals, including, you know, like hiring up five or six new people, scaling this part, scaling that part. I'm moving faster than I've ever moved in my life. And I think I can move a little quicker, but Wait, to go like, okay, take that one year goal and make it happen in three months just seems reckless. Is that, is that why you're risk adverse? Cause everything outside of your, com- everything outside of what you're comfortable pushing for seems reckless or because it's just not coming to mind. I don't know. I don't, I don't have the, I don't have the plan. I don't know what to do beyond what I'm currently doing. Hmm. I don't, I don't have the game plan to say, this is what I want to build. I don't know how to solve this problem beyond what I'm currently doing. I think I'm spending my time, energy, resources on the best thing possible to help accomplish the thing. Plus some fun projects, right? Like plus helping him, helping him, helping her, helping you, right? Like that, that fills the soul on a, on a, in, in my face, you know, tangible level, but I don't want to be a coach full time and have that be my business. But the, um, yeah, like a billionaire wanted to buy my channel. Why? I don't know. We didn't get that far. It's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what, I don't know what I would do, but what I don't want to work for him. Right. Uh, And what else would I do? So I get another cash injection. Great. Now what, what am I? There's tons of unhappy rich people. I love what I'm doing. This is great. Oh man. Do do I, do I hire people and then just have people and like, none of the ideas sound good. If you're going to burn money on things, none of it feels like it, it makes sense. Sounds to me like, it sounds to me like the trap, not the trap, the, the, the side effect or the drawback or the unintended consequence of being so immediately like idea to action, idea to action, idea to action means that you're very focused on the present and doing the things that you need to do the 15% for the future for sure. But I don't know. I, I like, I, I don't know how, I don't know how big you have to think for it to actually scare you. Um, it's not the size so much that would scare me. Like some things, a lot of things would scare me, even though it's not that big. Like, like um, having a guest on the show or going and doing, I don't know, like lots of disappointing people, right? One person, a hundred people, a million people, like the fear that I would disappoint somebody right? may not seem like some big deal, but to me, it's a big deal. Is there like, so I, I know that my therapist has told me that I have perfectionist traits because I get very caught up in wanting to do things the right way. Um, is there like a term, like we, we talk about perfectionists, right? Perfectionism slows people down, holds them back, blah, 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 blah. Is there a term for fear of disappointment that probably has the same drawbacks or weight in your life as perfectionism might have in my life or other people's lives or what have you? Is this fear of disappointment not only something that, that helps you step up the day of, but actually might be holding you back? Yes. I don't know the term. It's it's the challenge is taking the subconscious to the conscious. As soon as I catch it, I'm doing it. Mm. I don't catch it. We don't catch ourselves playing small. We, we hide behind the reasons why we can't do it. Mm. I, I probably played small a whole bunch today. Even, even the idea of thinking about this one guy instead of helping Millions. America, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, 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 I marvel at Elon Musk. And his vision, no matter how big I'm thinking, Elon Musk is like off yeah. thinking on a whole different scale. I, I don't, I don't know. I like, I don't know how to bridge that gap yet. Um, mm-hmm. Just saying something like, Hey, think 10 X bigger. What does that look like? I don't know. I don't know. Like it's, it's outside what I'm doing. You know, what is a, what is a thought leadership channel on YouTube look like with, 30 million subscribers? Yeah, I, was gonna say, I was gonna say 50 million, but 30 50 million, million like, sounds good. It doesn't good. exist. Like there's nothing, I don't even know. Yeah. I, think, I think what I'm doing is actually the best path to get there, but there's nobody who's come even close to doing yeah. it. So- And does that haunt you or does that drive you? Neither. Classic Evan. I don't, okay. I, I don't judge myself for it. It's like, I would, it'd be, 
if I'm thinking about it, like, okay, what, what does a, what does a bigger version of my business look like that brings a lot of value? I'm, I'm constantly having conversation with myself about it, but at the same time, it's like, and I'm kicking right now. Like, let's go. We're, we're, we're doing it. Amazing. So for you at the end of the day, it all comes down to what? Am I proud of myself for what I did today? So you're laying down on your pillow. If you can fall asleep, because often you can't, but if you can fall asleep, you're just running through. Did, did I make the most of the day? And am I proud of the effort? Yeah. I mean, even that the pillow test is something I use as a, as a tool for people to use. For me, it's a constant, like it's a almost second by second judgment. It's not just, I don't sit at the end of the night. I don't do it. My, I don't get to the end of the night. It's like, I'm reflect. let me reflect on my day. I'm reflecting now. This is reflecting. I'm reflecting already. This is happening. And so the, that feeling builds. And if I'm not happy with how this interview has gone for my next one, I'm, I'm already trying to tweak it and be more proud of my effort going into the next show as opposed to waiting and and saying, I'm going to do better tomorrow. (laughs) That was a great talk. Oh, so good. Okay. Key takeaways for me. Number one, action eliminates regret. Five years from now, you can regret that you didn't do it right now, or you can just do it right now. (laughs) Number two, what is your one word? Say it right now. Say it out loud. Mine's extraordinary. Do you feel the way that you feel right now saying it? Feel that even more tomorrow and the next day, every single day. Never stop chasing that feeling. Always continue to grow. And number three, always look out for the big next thing, but don't allow it to change your purpose. Use it as a tool to grow your business and yourself, but never lose your why. I want you to remember that those of us who have something to prove, we can show the world and we can show ourselves that we have what it takes to make it happen. But you have to think big. You've got to be bold and you must say yes. If you're ready for another push, you have got to hear the conversation I had with this confidence coach. Click on the link right over there. Empathy and kindness. So I have that side of me too. As a woman, when we do compare ourselves to another woman, it's almost as if that woman is taking something away from us.